Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. For this lesson, we want to keep building our tic-tac-toe game. Now in the last video, we showed you how to set up the layout of your game. And in this video, we want to jump right into scripting the game controls. So let's get started. So here we have our tic-tac-toe game open up inside of Unity. And the first thing that we want to do is import one more sprite image to the file system of our game. And I've already gone ahead to do that. I have this new image here, which is just a simple black circle. And I'll explain why we need this. But to find this image, all you have to do is search Circle PNG and Google, and you'll be able to find an image similar to this. You want to make sure that it's a PNG and that it has a transparent background. And then once you import it, it's going to say default for the texture type, like this. And all you have to do is change that texture type to Sprite, 2D, and UI and then hit the apply button. Once you have the circle imported, we're going to use this circle to be an indicator of whose turn it is, whether it's the X player's turn or the O player's turn. And so to do this, we're just going to place a little dot above either the X or the O. So let's right click on our X score game object and go down to UI and then select image. We can then rename this game object and I'm going to rename it to turn icon. The next thing that we want to do is drag our circle sprite into the source image attribute of our image component. We then want to place this game object above the X. And so I'm going to change its Y position to something like 180. That looks pretty good. And we can also reduce the size. And I'm going to just make it something like 50 by 50. We then want to duplicate this game object and drag it onto our O score game object and then center its X position so that we have another circle above the O. Now that we have these circle icons, we can start scripting our game. So I'm gonna to go to our scripts folder. I'm gonna right click, go to create, and then C sharp script. Let's name this script to game controller. And then let's open the script in Visual Studios. Once you have your script open in Visual Studios, the first thing that we need to do is add a namespace up at the top. And since we're building this game entirely out of UI game objects, that namespace has to be the Unity Engine.UI namespace. And so I'm going to type using Unity Engine and then dot UI. And then we want to add a semicolon. The next thing that we need to do is add some variables that we're going to be using. So right at the top of our class, I'm going to add a few variables. The first variable is going to be an indicator of whose turn it is, whether it's the X player's turn or the O player's turn. And so this is going to be a public, and then we're going to use an int, and then we can name this whose turn. Let's add a little comment, and we can say 0 equals X and 1, 1, equals O. Now we could use a bool for this variable, but we're actually going to use the numerical value of whose turn it is. And so we want to use an int. The next variable is going to be a public int, and this is going to be the turn counter. And so every time a player clicks on a square and it becomes the next player's turn, we're going to increment this variable. And so let's add a comment for this variable, and let's say counts the number of turns played. The next variable we want to add is a public game object. And this is going to be an array. And we can call this turn icons. And so this is going to be an array that holds the game objects of those circle icons that we added to our game. Let's add a comment. And we can say displays whose turn it is. The next variable is going to be a public, and this is going to be of type sprite. And this is also going to be an array. And then we can call this player icons. The comment that we can leave for this variable could be something like 0 equals x icon and 1 equals y icon. Finally, the last variable that we want to add is going to be a public, and it's going to be of type button. This will also be an array, and we can call this tic-tac-toe spaces. 
For the comment of this variable, we could say something like playable spaces for our game. Now that we have all these variables created, the next thing that we want to do is create an initialization function for starting our game. And so I'm going to add a void function, and we can do this right below the start function. And let's call this game setup. Inside this function, we can initialize all our variables. And so the first variable that we're going to initialize is whose turn it is. And we're going to set this equal to zero because when you first start a tic-tac-toe game, the X player always goes first. Now later on, if the players have played more than one game, we could have a button that changes whose turn it is to start at the beginning of each round. Next, we can initialize the turn counter and we're going to set that equal to zero. For the turn icons, we want to set the X player's icon to active and we want to disable the O player's icon. And so to do this, we're going to type two lines. The first one is going to be turn icons and then square brackets. And inside the square brackets, we want to grab the first element, which is element zero. And then we want to say dot set active and set this to true. For the next line, we want to say turn icons and then square brackets and get the second element, which is element one. And then we want to say set active and we want to pass in false. Now there's nothing that we need to initialize for our player icons. We're actually going to set those values in the inspector, but for the tic-tac-toe spaces, we need to reset the source image for all those buttons to be blank. And so to do this, we're gonna create a for loop, and this for loop is going to say int i equals zero, and i is less than tick tack toe spaces dot length and then i plus plus and inside this for loop what we want to do is access each element of our tic tac toe spaces variable so we're going to say tic tac toe spaces square brackets i so i is the iterator of our for loop and so it's going to access each element of our tic tac toe spaces variable and the first thing that we want to do to all these buttons is make sure that they're interactable. And so we're going to say dot interactable. And then we're going to set this equal to true. The next thing that we're going to do to all these buttons is reset the graphic. And so we're going to type in tic tac toe spaces square bracket i. And then we're going to say dot get component. And inside carrots, we're going to get the image component. And then we need parentheses outside the carrots and the next thing that we say is dot sprite to get the image of the button and we're going to set it equal to null. Now that we have this function created the next thing that we need to do is call this function in the start function so I'm going to say game setup and then parentheses and a semicolon. Let's go ahead and save our script and go back to unity the first thing that we need to do is create a game controller object that we can attach the script to. So I'm going to create an empty game object inside our hierarchy and then rename it to game controller. And then I'm going to drag on our game controller script into the inspector. Now we need to go through and set all the variables for our game controller script. So whose turn we can leave at zero, turn count we can leave at zero, turn icons, we want to set this array size to be two. And then we need to grab the turn icons and drag them into these fields. So the first one is going to be the X score turn icon. And so I'm going to place that there in element zero. And then O score turn icon, I'm going to drag into element one. The player icons, we need to set this array size to two as well. And then we're going to go to our sprites folder and the first icon is going to be our X sprite. So I'm going to click on that and drag it into element zero. And then our O sprite, I'm going to drag into element one. For the tic-tac-toe spaces variable, I want to expand this. And for the array size, we want it to be nine. But before we set it, I'm actually going to use a quick way to set all these variables. So I'm actually going to lock my inspector by clicking on this little lock up here in the top right corner of our inspector. And this just makes it so that if I select a different game object in our hierarchy, the inspector will remain the same. It'll still display the components for our game controller game object. 
So to set the nine values of our tic-tac-toe spaces, I'm going to click on all the buttons that are a child to our grid game object. So I'm going to click on TL and then hold shift and click on BR. And then I'm going to grab them and drag them over and cursor over the tic-tac-toe spaces variable and then let go. And that sets all nine values in our tic-tac-toe spaces. We can then go ahead and unlock the inspector. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit play and see how our initialization function works. And there we go. Now there's not a whole lot happening visually inside our game, but the one indicator that our function is working is that the turn icon for the X is active, while the turn icon for the O is inactive. The last thing that we want to do in this video is save our scene. So I'm going to hit Control S, and that saves our scene. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this video. We were able to create an initialization function to initialize the game to get it ready to be played by two different people. If you found this video to be informational and you were able to get your script to work so that it displays whose turn it is, let us know in the comments below. Also let us know if you have any suggestions on how we can make these videos better and more informational. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get regular notifications when we release new videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.